All right, so, uh, oh, okay. Thinking that I'm going to enlighten you about new hydrogen storage materials, why people are interested in them, and how we go about discovering them. In five minutes is probably a bit ambitious, but here we go. Uh, all right, hello, I'm a material scientist, which means that I'm fascinated by materials that have interesting physical properties. So uh, that's why I went into scientific research in the first place, to make new materials. But um, being a scientist, uh, you're driven not only by curiosity, but also the, uh, the desire to solve a big problem. Uh, in my opinion, one of the most pressing and one of the scariest problems that we face in, in our generation is the problem of energy. So the, the fact that there's not enough energy to go around, fossil fuels are limited in supply and they're geographically unequally distributed, which leads to conflict. Um, by using fossil fuels, we generate carbon dioxide, uh, and which has been implicated as a greenhouse gas, and uh, that leads to global warming, which is a problem for everyone. So you can see that there are a number of, of environmental, economical and ethical reasons that we want to move away from fossil fuels to more renewable resources. Um, so coming from New Zealand, we have a lot of sheep, but we also have a lot of wind turbines. Uh, now, if you, if you go and look at these turbines on, um, on a day when energy demand is low, uh, you'll see that there aren't many of these turbines spinning. And that's because we have no good way of being able to store the energy that comes out of, of renewable resources, such as uh, wind power or solar energy, to be able to use it when the sun isn't shining, for example. So hydrogen has been touted as a, a method of being able to store the energy that we get from intermittent renewable resources, such as solar or, or wind power, to be able to use it when we want to. So hydrogen as a fuel has um, many benefits. You can use it without producing uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, everyone has access to water, so they can produce it. Um, but as you can see from this picture, it's an invisible gas, which <laughs> makes it quite difficult to, to store and carry around. So um, for example, if you wanted to run your car on hydrogen, then um, yeah, you'd probably need a bigger garage. Um, <laughs> So what we want is a way of being able to store this, this hydrogen uh, in a dense form to make it easier to use. Now the conventional way is to use very thick walled uh, steel containers to compress down the hydrogen. But you can see, uh, looking at the, the ceiling of this hydrogen bus in London, if you were taking one of these, these cylinders and putting it on top of a, a Morris Minor, you can see where the problem is. So solid state hydrogen storage is, is a way of overcoming this problem. So uh, solid state storage, um, I'm talking about using smart materials to condense the hydrogen uh, into a, a usable and transportable form. So one of my favorite classes of materials for, for doing this is um, nanoporous materials. So these are materials that have been described as being molecular sponges. So they've got very tiny pores, uh, like much smaller than the width of a human hair. And they can compress and suck in and compress this hydrogen to a density that you wouldn't be able to achieve otherwise. So these materials, by, by virtue of their structures and the interaction between the atoms that make up the, the molecular sponge and the hydrogen, uh, can store uh, hydrogen and make it easier to move around and use. Now, as a material scientist, I'm interested in the interplay between the structures of these materials and their physical properties. For example, the, the gas storage capacity. So if we can understand the structure, then we can understand how to make better materials. So the way we look at these is by using fantastic, complicated uh, techniques. For example, we play around a lot with x-rays and neutrons, which can penetrate a solid material to look at the hydrogen inside so that we can see where it is, how it's distributed, what sort of um, uh, geometrical and, and chemical conditions it prefers, so that we can use this information to design the next generation of hydrogen storage materials. So by, by getting a greater understanding of um, the best way to design new materials is how we take materials like this um, from the lab into the real world so that we can start using them for real world applications. So I'm hoping that in five years time, I'll be able to come back to the, the next Ignite talk and be able to tell you how we took these materials, designed better ones, to create a, a brighter and more sustainable future.
Thank you. Okay.